wants to know how weird, how weird Austin really is. I stayed, and my, my son is in the glamping business, so I stayed outdoors in Wimberley last night. Do you know how cold it was in Wimberley last night? Yeah, my phone wouldn't even charge. It was so cold. The water froze. So, but it was weird and beautiful. But that's about, enough about me. I just, I'm going to give you my cred for this panel. I, I was the original editor of PC Magazine when it was a magazine and it came in your mail. And then I launched a bunch of conferences and events, particularly for you at CES. I launched the Digital Money Conference and worked very hard to make the folks at CES understand the importance of crypto. So really great to be here with John. Um, John Caroni is, first of all, an amazing human, and he will tell you about it. But first thing you have to do is give him a round of applause because he was, just this week, right, nominated Utah um, Business Leader of the Year, right? Yep. And, yeah, and Utah is on its way to being Wyoming and Texas in terms of adoption of crypto. That's yep. right. That's exactly right. So, John, for those people, how many people know about SafeMoon? Okay, but let's zero them back to what you, what you envisioned and what you're building, just for people that don't know about SafeMoon. Well, I can start with the core, which is, you know, SafeMoon's a human-focused innovation company, so uh, ROI, return on impact. So the more impact that we have, the more technology we release, the greater our ecosystem can grow, which then feeds back into the return on impact. So increasing the impact in the world and doing good. Yep, humans and, and crypto. Yeah, a uh, human impact is, is, is a, a noble cause. So let's, let's start with a little bit about you. How many people know John was actually in the US military? Uh, why don't you yeah, uh, so I was a nerd. I was an Intel analyst. Um, I got to do some cool things. Uh, I was supposed to be a reservist, but most of my time was spent on active duty status. I would, uh, I, I would probably sum up my career as getting uh, ra roped into things that I did not intend to get roped into. So like, hey, go do the school. Okay, now that you know the school, you're going to go do this other thing. Um, and you were in Afghanistan, right? Yeah, so I spent six months in Afghanistan back in 2019. Uh, it was a good experience. I uh, wouldn't do it again, but uh, it was a good experience. I uh, learned a lot and was able to really uh, test my character and my, uh, my skill set. Um, took a lot of lessons learned from there on you know, different aspects of what, what caused us, like what, what was the crux of the issue um, in this, in this uh, arena. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and you also got to see how money moved there, and not, yeah. right? Not, yeah. not especially efficiently, I assume. No, no, they used, uh, they used cash uh, for the most part, um, which, you know, when you have something that isn't transparent, uh, it can create a lot of issues uh, to the point where, you know, uh, the more corruption that happens, the more conflict that's created, and it's just this ever-ending cycle. The other aspect I learned was uh, kind of like entropy, you know, uh, first, third, fourth order of effects. Um, what happened in Afghanistan would have a ripple effect across the globe. You know, uh, there's an example where um, they would go and burn a poppy field um, to get rid of, you know, the, the heroin trade, but then that increases the demand for uh, other narcotics, which then affects uh, what happens at the U.S. border, which then affects legislation, um, you know, in, in Washington, D.C., which then affects Afghanistan, which then affects shipping lanes. So everything's kind of tied into each other. Um, and so that's one of the things that I identified while I was there was just the ripple on and follow on effects of one single action can create a tidal wave at the other side. So becoming aware of that and also being able to utilize that where you can not only monetize your, your, your first initial product, but you can also take advantage of the second, third, fourth order of effects on that. Right. So, yeah, and we, I think we're seeing it in Ukraine right now, the, yep. same, the same kind of things. And, and actually we're seeing crypto playing a major part in what's going on in Ukraine on both sides, uh, one to raise money and one to hide money. Um, so well, crypto is like the worst place to hide money because it's on a transparent, immutable blockchain. Like, just use cash. But like, no, don't use crypto for that stuff. It's completely visible. Yeah, and some people do pretty well. But yeah, so, anyhow, so, Af so Afghanistan, you're in the military, you get trained in special intel and, and ops. I was, I was just, an, yeah, so, 
my whole job was just to know things. And so I became really good at learning things really quickly and rapidly, um, which is very beneficial when you're trying to pivot in business or learn a new concept. Um, and so it's really, really helped me learning how to learn and then retain knowledge. So you also have this incredible um, sweet spot in your heart for all things Africa. Why yeah. don't you tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're doing there? Yeah, I spent uh, most of my younger years, I, I lived in uh, Kenya and Ethiopia, um, and then uh, moved back to the States. Uh, I actually grew up overseas, so got exposed to a lot of different cultures. But um, there's a lot of uh, resources, not, not in terms of like, you know, uh, natural resources, but uh, knowledge as well untapped potential that, that, that exists in Africa where there's a different school of thought or uh, methodology where if you're able to provide access to opportunity in that region, the innovations that can come from there, there's stuff that we can't even fathom. When you're able to connect communities and connect different minds together, you get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and that perspective is value added in, in the world. And so do you think it's because, I mean, we had a dollar and a very traditional banking system here. It was sort of like we had a landline telephone system. When m mobile came in, you know, Africa and the subcontinent were faster to adopt it than we were in many ways. Do you think you're seeing that with crypto also? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really easy to innovate there because they, they want the technology and they understand that why go through all the steps that yeah. the West had to go through when they can just skip to 5G or... Um, skip to renewable energy. So tell us about, w I know you're working on a project in Africa now. Yes, yep. When, uh, I can't really discuss the details of that right now, um, but I, I can I, say I was there uh, last week. Things um, went well. Things went well, I'll be going back here This soon. is what happens when you talk to a special ops guy. <laughs> you know, right? I was a nerd, there. I was just a nerd. So let's talk about what is your definition of venture philanthropy? What, what does that mean and how does crypto tie into it? Well, first off, crypto, you're able to, um, using blockchain technology, you're able to reduce the friction points um, in, in a system. You're able to create uh, an efficiency um, that you can't really get with the traditional systems in place. I mean, for example, when you're doing wire transfers, why does it take two days to go through? When in reality, I can just shoot USDT, like right here on stage to someone on the other side of the planet. And at that point, it's just how fast can the Ethereum blockchain go or the amount of transactions per second. So um, when you're able to, decrease that wait time, well now you can actually, those two days that were then wasted doing that wire transfer, you can just get straight to work. So f because we're able to cr uh, create efficiency in our systems, we're actually able to get a lot of uh, savings. And rather than, and this is kind of where the, the philanthropy, venture philanthropy kind of comes in, it's um, rather than take those savings and increase our profits, we take those savings and we pass, it on to, pass that on to our customer. And then we target areas that, or target product lines that increase quality of life in areas that traditionally don't have the the same standards that you know that we have here in austin so it's targeting those industries with a very efficient ecosystem to create good yes we still have to make money we still have to bring in revenue so we can continue that innovation that's where like the venture philanthropy kind of model comes in where there is going to be an roi but because w our metric of success is how much impact we have it's more about the impact than how long it takes for that for example, that, that wind turbine to pay itself off. Right, I know you, you love wind turbines, <laughs> renewable energy. Yes. So the way that works is the m efficiencies that you save um, with SafeMoon, a portion of that goes towards these. Um, well, it reduces our overhead costs to where we can actually implement more. So if, for example, it, you know, if you have $10 and $5 of that is what it actually costs for the product, um, rather than take that full other $5 and just pocket that, what we do is we put that back in and now we're actually spending the full $10 to get two products for the price of one. And will your community benefit from that as well? Yes, as the ecosystem grows um, and as the adoption of SafeMoon grows, uh, the, the community does benefit. So let's talk about what SafeMoon has now. You're, you have... There's a token, correct? Yes. Yeah, so our first product, our first piece of software was the uh, the SafeMoon token. Um, we then released the uh, decentralized exchange uh, swap by SafeMoon, um, and that supports both the Binance Smart Chain and the Ethereum Chain. Uh, we'll be adding more chains um, as time goes on. Uh, and then we released our wallet. We have over a million users uh, between uh, Android and iOS, so we've seen a, a lot of success with that. 
Um, and then we have SafeMoon Connect coming out here shortly, but uh, we have a lot of different products, but they all kind of feed into each other, into one ecosystem that then ties into some of the stuff we're doing in the infrastructure development space. So the wallet's, the wallet's here. That's good. The wallet's here, that's yeah. A, that's you a can, good thing. Uh, you can find it on the App Store, Google Play Store, just search SafeMoon. And you have a huge community. We do. How, how'd you do that? Come on, give us the, se <laughs> give us the secrets of the trade, because uh, they seem to be a very active, vocal community. Yeah, so uh, they were extremely active to the point where in the beginning we were just trying to get our uh, feet underneath us and figure out what was going on um, in terms of how do you manage just this massive, very passionate family that we have called you know, the Safe Moon Army. Um, so in all reality, I don't really remember the first few months. It was a lot of sleep deprivation. Uh, but as I said in the previous panel, what we focused on was uh, being able to clear or to communicate clear messaging to a wide dichotomy, whether it's a college student or a board certified physician, being able to say one statement but actually resonate with both demographics. Yeah, no, that's not, and, and, and to keep in touch with them, which you seem to do a really good job of, <laughs> of, of, um, on your community. So now I'm going to have to ask you about the the elephant in the room. How many of you uh, have read about Safe Moon lately? You've been in and out of the news a fair amount. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a class action suit that I doubt you can tell us much about, but I think you can tell us something about. And what it's like to be um, in charge of a company that's facing some tumult. Well, so we, uh, Safe Moon won't comment on on, on on an ongoing case. However, uh, that's a business model that we don't support. We're, it's about venture philanthropy. Um, and we're looking forward to clearing things up. So, and the clearing things up, uh, I'm gonna just read my notes, is um, there are a group of people who accuse SafeMoon of false and misleading statements and uh, not having the liquidity behind the currency. like. Are you talking to your community? Or are you just hoping they all go away? And I guess the lesson for everybody here is, what's the strategy in a crisis? Because I think you've done kind of, kind of well. You had some staff changes as well. Yeah, my brother went back to college. That, there's nothing uh, super complicated about that. Somebody asked, well, what's the timing? I'm like, classes start in two weeks. He's got to get back, meet, some, meet up with his friends. You know, he's, he's a younger individual. Um, and, so, and he's got a year and a half left on his degree. So it's just something that he wants to do. He's like, I might as well go go do it now. Um, but to, again, we won't comment on an ongoing case, but uh, Safe Moon will continue mission, will continue moving forward because we have a broader and greater goal, which is to, to do good in the world. And we'll continue to do that. Okay, trivia question. How did you get Safe Moon as your name? Anybody know how you got Safe Moon as the name? So it's a play on words. Uh, so there's a, a common phrase used in, uh, it's, I think it started on Reddit. It's called To the Moon. Um, it was popularized during the whole uh, Game Stonks meme era. Well, meme era, that was last year. Um, it's been a very, very fast-paced year. Uh, uh, but yeah, so it means to the moon. So safe moon is safely to the moon. So it's just a, a nice little metaphor. So... What other lessons do you have for this audience? I mean, you, you have, you've, you stood your ground, you're articulate, you have a vision, and you stick to it every day. That's not easy, I can tell, for an older person or a younger person to do. Um, how do you compete in a really crowded, quick-moving space? Well, first off, we're not competing with other people. We're competing with our, a, a version of ourselves 10 years from now. Again, this is a, a business is an infinite game and not a finite game, and so, it's about continuing the evolution, continuing uh, pushing forward and improving the company. You know, we're not perfect, and we never will be, because perfection is a journey, not a destination. Nice little paradox there. So for us, it's how do we be better tomorrow, the next day, five years, 10 years down the line? And so with that North Star that we, we follow, um, we put that into our products, we put that into our team, just like when our products evolve and we upgrade, you know, whether it's the, the new cross-chain swap that we're putting in, the team also has to evolve as well. So people will come and go from SafeMoon over the next 10 years. However, the vision and the mission is what remains. And so how much hands-on, are you a hands-on kind of guy And when it comes to just coding all of this, or are you coders somewhere else? Uh, so one of the first things I identified um, 
is I wanted to get to close to a 24-hour development cycle as we could. So we actually have uh, developers across the globe, whether in Canada, um, Southeast Asia, Europe, London, et cetera. So we have uh, developers across the globe. And same with our team as well. Um, because crypto is a, it's a, it knows no borders, it's a 24-hour cycle. And so having support for everyone across the, the different regions of the globe was super critical for us. Um, so the, the staffing has been very important to us uh, in terms of making sure. And then in terms of developers, I honestly don't have that number off the top of my head mm -hmm. um, as that's handled by uh, my VP of Ops. But I think we're at 25 to 50. I'd have to double check. Actual like coders. And t tell us about what you're doing in terms of security. I mean, it clearly, um, there's, I don't have to tell you how many scams and things there are a day. So how much of an emphasis, like in a pie chart, look at how much you're putting into the security behind your uh, token. Heavily. Um, we look at that every day. That's why we have the, uh, like we've been able to catch scammers and help um, exchanges uh, stop people from stealing their funds um, via a blacklist feature where then they are given the time allotted for them to actually track down who stole those funds. Again, like. Uh, blockchain is transparent and immutable, so you can see exactly where it goes. Eventually, it's going to go to an exit point. And so uh, we've been able to fo focus heavily on helping um, stop this because there's a lot of lot of scams going on. Um, we actually, there was a, a quick little, f not funny story, um, satisfying story was there was a scammer that we caught, sold about $80,000 uh, worth of uh, safe moon tokens and other tokens from other people, um, and we were able to catch him. And then he started reaching out, and he actually sent flowers asking for us to unfreeze it. I'm like, no, <laughs> the stolen funds. So, yeah. But security is very, very important to us. Um, we have three pillars that we focus on um, in terms of like our product developments. Uh, security, accessibility, and quality. All right, so security we just covered. Yep. Quality, talk to us about what makes something have quality, like in your, in, in, you know, your definition. Well, quality is uh, on the... It, it's perception of the person viewing it. Um, luckily, we integrate the SafeMoon Army into our development cycle. So when I ask a question of, hey, do we want to cross the chains? I can get a yes or no right then and there ra ra rather quickly, which actually reduces our dev time. Um, and because it's something they want, you know, we'll spend the time it takes to make sure it looks nice, it functions properly, um, and then get the feedback on what we can do to improve it. So that's kind of like the yeah. quality process. So your community is really informing how you iterate whatever you do next. Yeah, well, it's, uh, we can talk directly to the people who use the products. And I mean, I use the products as well, but I want to get more opinions. And being able to directly interface there and talk with them and say, hey, they didn't like this feature, or they want a, uh, an upgraded calculator within the SafeMoon wallet, um, crossing the chains, et cetera. We're able to interact directly and then provide them a more quality experience based off of their perception and their opinion versus just ours alone. And so what does accessibility mean to you? Is that just Maybe. how easy it is to purchase and store and tell me? Yeah, so those who uh, were involved with uh, SafeMoon in the early days in uh, purchasing and having to uh, grab BNB, swap it to BEP20, it was a very complicated process um, in, in the early stages. But one thing we've always been focused on is making crypto accessible for everyone because it it is for everyone. I mean, that's what the it's designed for. It's to bridge people and bridge um, economies together in a borderless fashion. Um, so making it easy to the point where uh, anybody can access it. Somebody who doesn't actually care about crypto, but making it easy to the point where they can pick up the f uh, pick up their phone, download the app, and then be able to start participating in the Web three economy. That's it. Pick up the phone, download the app. Exchange some money. Exchange some money. Interact with decentralized applications. Um, collect NFTs. Whatever, whatever they decide to do, but make it easy for them to participate in this uh, Web three ecosystem. So, what do you feel is next on your roadmap? To like, I, d I didn't look at this morning whose token is where, but where are you today, and where do you want to be as w as you move forward? Ideally, I want to everything that we've talked about release by the end of this year. Um, so that's the blockchain, SafeMoon Connect, point of sale system, and the other products that we've talked about. So 
ideally complete all of those so we can start integrating the larger. So go back to Safe and Connect for a minute. What, yeah. Tell me about the product. Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's kind of a hub for a lot of the Safe Moon ecosystem. Um, so there's some NFT integrations into there. Uh, but the main point of Safe Moon Connect is to actually uh, make it easier for people to use their crypto. So rather than having a what you call a public key or a wallet address, those are some uh, very passionate dogs. I know. Well, we had the baby in the last session. We got the dogs in this one, right? I, yeah. yeah. They love safe moon. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> yeah. Um, where were we? We were talking about your new product about... Um, oh, Safe Moon Connect. Yeah, so it's... That's what they say. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, they're, they're doing the speech for me right now. <laughs> So uh, Safe and Connect is the hub. Um, it has NFT integration, but it's to make it easier to, to participate in this Web3 uh, ecosystem. Uh, one of the key features is um, being able to eat, do donations easier. Uh, with the point of sale system, it makes it easier for businesses to actually start taking crypto because there's an internal inventory management system um, and also an invoicing system where because on blockchain, you can actually see the transaction hash or the, uh, the receipt of sending uh, crypto back and forth. Um, it creates a, a system where it's e it's interesting. I've, I've worked with uh, businesses and I'm like, hey, will you take crypto? They say things, oh no, it's too difficult. Or, well, it doesn't integrate with my inventory management system. Right. Name an excuse. And so the point of sale system is to make it to where there's no excuse not to take crypto. You yeah. Know. yeah, well actually I think what it, MasterCard and Coinbase are working on a, a credit card that you know, you'll be able to use. And I think it's you know those for this country, anyhow, it's the traditional yes. ways of, of using, uh, and, of creating a transaction. And speaking of the card, you know, SafeMoon uh, identified that early on, and so we, we've been working through the, for lack of better terms, of the regulatory process in order to release our own card, and so we're right now having a, a launch goal of Q2 of this, of this year for our own, our own uh, debit card. So in the last, I think this guy smelled the hot dogs is what <laughs> ha what's happening. But so the... <laughs> the last panel talked about the, uh, the regulators and who they watch. And like, do you get advice from somebody? Are you paying attention to blockchain association or um, somebody in Utah or looking yeah, at Wyoming? I, my, who do you look to? The, the legal team handles that. So they, they monitor everything that happens and then they give me advice based off of that. So any questions from anybody? But we think we just have a few minutes left. Or any Safe Moon users? Any Safe Moon users there? There you go. Yep. <laughs> Play into the crowds. And because you know this guy, because you like the coin. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the challenges that I'm facing um, is I've been doing a lot of brands for a lot of founders and CEOs, if you want to call them that, of crypto companies. And uh, a lot of them are having uh, kind of a duality almost between distancing themselves and being anonymous and being, hey, here I am, I'm a legitimate person. And they're having a real struggle on like that balance because obviously this is crypto and it's market-based. Things can go down. There's lots of FUD, right? And a lot of people are kind of weary about being kind of cementing themselves into a certain brand of crypto or some sort of coin or token or technology, right? And then, of course, you get you understand what it's like to face charge, and then you're one executive order away from being criminalized. So, like, where do you, where do you, where do you see Tell the it. importance of a personal brand and how to, and, and how you kind of, yeah. I guess, tap dance around the new developments of the, uh, of the new crypto economy? All right, how do I answer that question? Um, so, it is a trade-off. Um, Putting your name behind something takes uh, takes a lot, and it's it is a risk. Um, but for for me, I believe in what Safemoon does. I believe in what we do as a company, and I believe in myself as well. Um, and I, I totally understand the the hesitation with like doxing yourself. There is there is a huge trade off there, and you do get a lot of flack online. You know, um, they'll they'll probably likely have to deal with you know un the unfortunate dark part of it is a lot of cyberbullying that takes place. But you got to have thick skin. You got to let it roll off the shoulder and don't take it personally. Um, and then one thing I always do um, is I look at what's the what's the positive sentiment behind their complaint. What are they actually trying to get at? Um, and then taking that feedback, 
whether it's positive or negative, and then using that to help evolve yourself as a, as a character, as a person. Um, sorry, help evolve your character and also you as a person. So it's, it's a tough decision. It's not for everyone. Um, if you know that uh, you're not going to do well um, with a lot of public exposure, um, you probably shouldn't go down that path. But also, don't, be, don't let fear go into your decision-making process. So, so yeah, and don't you think it's going to play out a lot like the market does? I mean, you will want to diversify. If you're watching the stock market the last couple of days and you're a blue chip holder, you're, you've had a rough ride. So I think you always want to take a portfolio, whatever it is, and diversify it. And I think in the crypto world, that means, you know, having some confidence in the blue chip uh, cryptos that, you know, and then having... Um, I won't call it Las Vegas money, but but having a little bit of tolerance for what you can not risk. Not financial advice. And <laughs> yeah, not financial advice. Right. I mean, everybody was a crypto pro in December. Yeah. And now everybody's like, oh yeah. Yeah, never financial advice. Um, so for me, I focus on the technology. Uh, at least with SafeMoon, it's like focus on your north star. What is guiding your company, and what's your actual mission? Um, rather than looking at other, other factors. You know, if, if you complete the mission, you'll have success. I love that it's a, I love that it's a mission. Um, I, I, mean, I, I just love that sentiment that there's, it's more than just a purchase. Yep. Um, it's really turning your thing into a movement, right? So it's, it's, it's your message has to be a movement. Yep. And, go ahead. Um, so as an entrepreneur, like, it's every day you're, you're worrying about, like, how you make other things go. So what is your biggest lesson that you've learned that kind of pushed, pushed you through? Biggest lesson. Uh, don't be afraid to fail because you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. I think one of the biggest uh, learning points in terms of communication within uh, with the, the Safe Moon Army was uh, that, that famous uh, AMA back in April of last year um, where we learned that you know, you have to be able to communicate in a common, effective manner to a diverse audience. So, um, it would be definitely the communication, and don't be afraid to fail. And again, it, you can break it down at a to a deeper level. Uh, don't let fear be in your decision-making process. And then, I guess, how do you go out to your community and tell them why you why you're different and why venture? Philanthropy pays a part in it. Like, you know, how do you? What's the day-to-day -day action on that? Um, so it's it's a team effort. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Adult who uh, does a lot of the community management. He's also oh, our Mr. Adult. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, he does a lot of the strategy and marketing and community engagement. So it is definitely a team effort uh, across the entire team in communicating that vision. Um, and from the the operation side, it's also executing. On, on what we've what we've stated, and of course, there's there's always going to be delays, um, in in some form or fashion, um, and you just got to roll with the punches there. So, do you think that speaking of delays, I know your wallet was delayed. It was in the news. Two weeks. It was in the news that it was delayed, and I think at that point, at least according to the press, you said something like that was news to me. Do you think you've gotten smarter about how to handle all of this? Um, I'm going to call it PR crisis. Uh, yeah, it, it just comes down yeah. to continuing mission. You don't, yep. you don't, you can't pay attention to the noise because then you'll get bogged down, and then you won't yeah. move forward. And does it frustrate you that people really two week delay is like the the post office does that every day? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, so I, it, it must frust it must be very frustrating to to have that kind of scrutiny all the time. Well, just like it's a uh, two week delay, the internet. Um, how do I put it? If you release a bad product, they'll never forgive you. But if you, it's delayed a little bit and you release a good product, it's yesterday's yeah. news. They move on. So for me, it's if we have a delay, um, it's for a reason. That's super smart. It, it's if it affects quality, security, or accessibility, and it's a detriment to one of those three, we might have to delay it. But however, um, yeah, with the wallet, it was a, a two-week delay. And we worked through it. We released the wallet, and now we have over a million users across a uh, Android and iOS. So you're going to release the next date of your next <laughs> of your next product launch, or just tell them, sorry, 
I'm, you'll see it when it gets no, here. And that's <laughs> dates. Okay, so dates are kind of tricky, um, especially in, in Web3 and in, a, in emerging tech where you're dealing with a lot of unknown unknowns and many, many unpredictable things, even down to um, – Sometimes there's there's this one error that keeps popping up when it comes to uh, some of the other products, uh, not specifically with SafeMoon, but many other many other uh, companies deal with this, which is like gas calculation error, and so you actually have to just go back and redo the whole little yeah. code base for that. Um, but there's just so many unknowns when dealing with emerging tech, and there's no uh, real roadmap or uh, like for a car, it's it's very simple. It's like four wheels and an engine, and then improve upon that. With Web3, the, the possibilities are endless. And so you pick a direction you go, and you, you adapt as it come. So picking, so creating a release date and actually predicting that, you know, it takes, it takes a little bit. And so for SafeMoon, you know, we've only been around a year, and now That's we're big. getting uh, metrics on, like, team performance. So we can actually start predicting when they'll actually get things done. So hopefully we'll be uh, able to do uh, launch dates. Um, I mean, we, we yeah. just did one uh, on the 22nd uh, cross-chain swap uh, will be launched. Brave man, that is right around the corner. So um, Please don't get mad at me. Right, right, <laughs> right, no, that. Going out on a limb here. So, that, that my, my question just went out, out of my head, but, um, all right, you talked about gas fees. So uh, the last panel talked about regulation, and um, do you welcome it? Do you want some regulation in this space? Uh, we live in a land of, so, uh, while people want to live in the metaverse, uh, they physically live in reality, and they usually live in a country with rule of law. And so you have to play by the rules. Um, and for me, it's it's not whether welcoming or not welcoming it. I just hope they make uh, educated decisions, and they seek to understand uh, before they make decisions. So they, they actually mm -hmm. become subject matter experts, so then they can uh, legislate. Um, and that's why, you know, uh, uh, Josh, my VP, is part of the uh, Utah Blockchain uh, Association. Um, where they are educating uh, legislators within Utah regarding blockchain, cryptocurrency, what it is. Um, it's like you don't go to a uh, police officer in the 10th century and then ask them to write traffic laws on uh, modern day vehicles. It just doesn't work. So you want to be able to educate yeah. them to make the best decisions right. and represent us properly. Yeah, no, you're right. That's happening with self-driving vehicles now. Yep. There is, you know, it's a... It's, we are in Texas, but it is the Wild West, no matter where, <laughs> where, no matter where it is. So my last question, Jordan, is that right? Are, are you, um, is it, yeah? My, la my, my last question, I was told I had to ask you this, and, and you guys, we should do it as trivia, but what do you love to eat for breakfast? <laughs> I got this from Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like the secret. Do you want the answer? Uh... <laughs> Excuse my jet lag. Um, I don't usually eat breakfast, it's but when whip, I do, it's got whipped cream on it. Oh yeah. Well, when I do eat breakfast, uh, I like um, whipped cream with a side of waffles. Right. Right. So. So really, the whipped cream with a little waffle. Yeah. 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 It's all about the whipped cream. Yeah. And um, I do wish you incredible success in what you're doing in Africa. It's so important. And and for those of you who've been following crypto and you watch what happened in Kenya with M-Pesa. I mean, it really changed the graph that was going on in the military. It gave people their fair share of their salary. I mean, it w it's really an amazing uh, venture philanthropy effort to watch where you do well by doing good. And, and, um, and um, you guys watching Ukraine? Are you being asked to do anything, not do anything? Are Ukrainians involved? Like, are they safe moon holders? Are Russians safe moon holders? Uh, safe moon is global. Um, I will say, you know, I, I really hope uh, Putin puts an end to the, the hostilities in, in the Ukraine, and I will stand with anybody who, uh, who supports an end to hostilities and bringing back peace. Well said. So with that, I'm going to let Jordan come back and, um, and do whatever he does best. Thank you so much for being here, and um, to the moon. Safely. Oh, <laughs>